Hello friends and welcome back. So today we will discuss about encryption, types of encryption and its working, requirement of different encryption methods for different organization needs and some limitations of using encryption techniques. So without wasting any time, grab a notepad and let's begin. Let's understand what is encryption. Encryption is a fundamental technique used in computer security and data protection to ensure the confidentiality of information. Encryption is a process of converting data or files into a format that is unreadable to anyone who doesn't have the proper decryption key. Encryption converts plain text which is readable text into cipher text which is like a secret language that computers use. It's impossible to understand or read cipher text without a proper decryption key. If any person has a decryption key, they will be able to decrypt the file back to normal state, which is plain text. Encryption is used for securing data at various stages, that is encryption of data in REST and data in transit. Encryption of data in transit is required while we are sending any data over internet. For example, when you are logging to any website, sending data over wireless network like connecting to any Wi-Fi, public Wi-Fi or sending data through email. All these are example of data in transit. So these need to be encrypted. Encryption of data at rest means full disk encryption through BitLocker or database encryption or mobile device encryption. The science of creating encryption is called cryptography while the broader study of creating and solving puzzles is called cryptology. Now let's understand two basic forms of encryption. One is symmetric and another is asymmetric. Each of these have its own strength and weaknesses. In symmetric encryption, both the sender and receiver use the same key to encrypt and decrypt data while asymmetric uses a public key and a private key. The public key can be shared with anyone, but the private key must be kept secret. To encrypt a message, the sender uses the public key of the receiver, and to decrypt a message, the receiver uses their private key. Let's go more deep into this and understand how this works. As we discussed that both the receiver and sender have the same key and both utilizes the same key for encrypting and decrypting any messages. AES that is Advanced Encryption Standard is a popular type of encryption which uses a single key to turn your data into a secret code. And this is used for things like secure file transfers and VPNs. The AES key can be of different length from 128 to 256 bits making it quite versatile for different security needs. You might be wondering how is the length of encryption key decided. So the length of AES key is decided by the desired level of security. A longer key provides more security but it also takes longer to encrypt and decrypt data. Organizations often have data classification and handling policy which determines classification of information based on sensitivity and criticality and accordingly level of security is provided to that layer in data. Once we have determined the level of security, it is recommended to use 128-bit key for protecting confidential information, 192-bit key for secret information and 256-bit key for top secret information. And it is just a recommendation from NSA but it does not apply to any organization. Any organization is free to choose their encryption key length as per the needs and objectives of the organization. So confidential information can be anything like employee payroll data, product development plans or customer contact list. And secret information is like trade secrets, market expansion strategies, upcoming mergers and acquisitions, right? Top secret information includes strategic plans, high sensitive R&D projects or executive compensation and succession plans. So as per the level of security needed for the data, we decide the length of encryption key, right? 
when you use shorter encryption keys it becomes easier for powerful computers to guess the right key by trying all possible combinations this technique is called brute force attack and it can be done quickly if the key is too short i have made a separate video on brute force attack which you can watch to get more understanding about these brute force attacks and i will put link in the description so what are some of the limitations of using symmetric encryption let's understand that so the first limitation of symmetric encryption is the need for one party to deliver keys to another with whom it would like to exchange data since both the sender and receiver use the same key to encrypt and decrypt data this means that the two parties must exchange the key in a secure way before they can start communicating so where is the challenge the challenge is how do they share this key securely in the first place especially when communicating over a insecure network or when communicating with someone who is unknown or untrusted right so let's understand it with an example suppose you and your friend want to send each other secret messages okay so you need a special key to encrypt and decrypt these messages the problem is that if you send the key to your friend over the internet it could be intercepted by someone trying to hack into your communication so you need a secure way to give the key to your friend without anyone else knowing it if you are communicating with a trusted party on a regular basis you can exchange the key in person or over a secure channel like handing over the key on usb drive piece of paper or maybe a phone call after that you can use the key to encrypt and decrypt all your communications and you can also periodically update the key to improve the security however in some environments it is not possible to exchange keys with customers in person or over a secure channel like in e-commerce because you have never met the customers and they will not trust you with their personal information also these online transactions are so fast and temporary that you don't have time to exchange keys with each customers individually right in these type of cases it is more difficult to use symmetric key cryptography so you might want to use asymmetric key cryptography instead of symmetric key cryptography another limitation of symmetric encryption is if same symmetric key shared with multiple participants on a secure channel then anyone with the key can decrypt any message that is sent on the channel right this means that it is not possible to authenticate the sender of a message in other words you cannot be sure who sent the message because everyone is using the same key you will not know who is encrypting the message and who is decrypting the message because the key is shared with everybody right right suppose you share symmetric key to your friends in a whatsapp group all members in that group will now have access to the key which can be used for encryption or decryption so anyone having access to key can encrypt or decrypt message and you will not know you will not be able to identify who have used that key well here we are not talking about whatsapp encryption whatsapp group encryption but we are using it as a secure way to share keys in the above example and for information of you all whatsapp uses a combination of both symmetric and asymmetric encryption which we can discuss later so what is the alternative the alternative to sharing the same symmetric key with all the participants is to have a distinct key shared between every pair of participants this means that you would need to generate and manage a separate key for each pair of participants and it can be difficult to manage especially if there are a lot of participants over a secure channel right now coming to asymmetric encryption so asymmetric algorithms have evolved to address the issues that arise with symmetric key crypto systems the intent of asymmetric algorithm is to provide a way by which a secure channel can be created between parties that lack prior awareness of each other as we all know that asymmetric uses a public key and a private key each person has two keys that is public key and a private key the public key can be shared with anyone but the private key is kept secret 
to encrypt a message the sender uses the public key of the receiver and then receiver uses their private key to decrypt the message okay let's understand it again to encrypt a message the sender uses public key of the receiver and the receiver uses their own private key to decrypt the message this is asymmetric encryption so every individual have two keys one public and one private and both these keys are mathematically related and it is very difficult to compute the private key from the public key but the manner of their generation means that each has the effect when used in appropriate symmetric algorithm if cipher text is created with one key then only the other pair of key has the ability to return to plain text as a result of this the public key can be freely distributed and used as a means of encrypting any message that should only be readable by the person whose public key is used and the person can use private key to decrypt the message right one important point to note that only messages that the public key can decrypt are those that were encrypted by the private key to which its creator has sole access and this is done to achieve non repudiation non repudiation is the assurance that someone cannot deny the validity of something okay so let's understand it with an example imagine that you signed a contract using your digital signature okay your digital signature is created using your private key anyone can verify your digital signature using your public key right but only you can create your digital signature using your private key but the other party who wants to verify they can use your public key and verify whether you signed the contract or not right it is also called public key cryptography because the public key can be freely shared what are some advantages of asymmetric is each party using public key cryptography only needs one pair of keys and the ability to freely share the public key overcomes the challenges of scalability which we have seen in symmetric key cryptography in public key cryptography you will have one public key and one private key you will need only your private key to be with you and public key can be shared with anybody anyone who wants to send the message they will encrypt it using your public key and you will decrypt it using your private key so here you need only two two keys but in symmetric encryption you needed single key for every pair right if you are communicating with your friend you needed a key if you are communicating with your another friend you needed a different key if you not, if you are communicating with your third friend you needed a different key right so managing these keys were significantly like tiring the limitations of asymmetric encryption is like it is very intense and slow as relative to symmetric algorithms and for that reason asymmetric cryptography is typically used only to encrypt short messages the most common use of asymmetric algorithm is to distribute symmetric keys that can then be used by the participants for fast and secure communication so in symmetric encryption there was a challenge to exchange the keys because if you were sending keys over in secure network then keys were vulnerable to interception right so the best method to send keys of symmetric encryption is using asymmetric method of encryption so i hope you are able to understand how both type of encryption works and where we use asymmetric and what is the requirement for symmetric encryption well if you think this is confusing or you are not able to understand i would recommend you to watch this video again and take your notes parallelly encryption is a very interesting subject of information security which you will only like if you understand the concept of it in our upcoming videos we will discuss about hashing which is also used for data integrity along with encryption so make sure you subscribe to the channel see you in another video another topic soon consider joining me on linkedin i have shared my profile link thank you have a great day